It's September, but we're already looking at global weather themes that will impact this winter. The Great Lakes are at their warmest, yet the ocean at the equator is colder, a flip that could shape where it turns stormy and where it stays warm. We'll talk about what that means and the way the snow piles up across Siberia over the next two months can shape the kind of winter that we're going to feel here at home. From the warm water across the North Pacific to the Arctic sea ice, the atmosphere is already setting the stage for winter. All of these variables will decide who gets the storms, who stays warm, and where the next big changes are coming. This is your weekly winter weather update. Every winter is full of variables that are just unpredictable, but in this video, we're gonna be talking about the broader impacts of what we're seeing. This is a map of temperature anomalies that we typically see during an ENSO neutral phase. And ENSO is just a way of measuring whether the Pacific Ocean near the equator is running warmer or colder than normal, which we'll get into in just a second, because that shift in those waters way across the Eastern Pacific can have an impact on how cold it gets across the United States. This is typically what you see in those neutral phases, and I think this is probably what we're going to see this year just based on that. However, we could see some La Nina effects creeping in, but overall, look at this, a colder than average setup. I'll explain why in just a second, but that means colder temperatures across the northern plains. That doesn't equate to more snow. It's just going to be colder, but you've got to have the cold before you get the snow. I always say that here on the channel. Now, where you saw colder than normal temperatures, if you see more moisture, you're going to get more snow. And I think that opens the door here from the northeast into the mid-Atlantic, also across the Pacific Northwest as we deal with that screaming jet, which I think we're going to get again this year. This type of setup generally means drier than normal conditions across the southern plains down into Texas. But again, it doesn't mean you won't get your cold shots of air with that northwesterly flow. Now let's dig into some of the details I've been watching over the last week. If you like this kind of weather content, a weekly winter weather update comes out every week. So another one will be on the way. So make sure you subscribe to get the latest. We're looking at temperatures of the ocean across the North Pacific. I want to show you where we are today compared to last year. We had colder than average temperatures just to the south and west of Alaska. And it was warm across the Pacific, but look how much warmer it is here this year. Now remember, we're just looking at big picture things here, and with this type of setup, you're probably going to see more clouds developing across the Pacific just because the temperatures of the ocean are warmer. The physical change of water from vapor to a liquid, which is condensation, releases heat energy. It literally warms the atmosphere up. And if you warm the atmosphere up, you're probably going to develop some type of ridging here in the North Pacific as the atmosphere literally gets thicker. You'll strengthen your polar jet and listen, what goes up has to come down somewhere and it likely would pull down here into the eastern United States, also the central U.S. That brings your cold air in with that type of setup. Will it be this way all winter? I don't think so. The difference between this year and last year, because you had such a difference in temperatures here, a pretty strong North Pacific jet was just screaming into the Pacific Northwest and the Canadian Rockies. That really limited some of this cold air from moving south. Is it different this year? Clearly the ocean is looking different. And this type of setup would allow that cold air to move south just because of the upper level ridging across the west. That drops your trough into the east. Going back to the Climate Prediction Center's precipitation outlook, you get the idea. Low pressure would form here, or at least storms would, and you get more rain, or in this case, if it's cold enough, snow. Near normal conditions across the upper Midwest and the Great Lakes, in my mind, would lead to probably a normal winter. However, with more cold air outbreaks and with a lot of northwest flow, you're going to get quite a bit of lake effect snow again this year. This type of setup generally is favorable also for clipper systems, which move in from the northwest. You can call them an Alberta clipper. You can call them a Manitoba mauler. I think that's what they call it, Manitoba Mahler. Anyway, you're going to get these ripples of low pressure that move in from the northwest that will bring rounds of snow to the east. The question is, how strong can this subtropical jet get as we head into the winter? Will that allow big snowstorms to develop? I don't have a crystal ball, but I can tell you the outlook at this point is looking pretty cold. It's been cool around the Great Lakes. It's no wonder that these temperatures are a little bit below average, especially across Lakes Erie, Lake Ontario. You know, we're talking about water temperatures here in the green, somewhere in the 60s. Ocean water in the eastern Pacific, right near the equator, where it's the hottest, you have the most incoming solar radiation, and where you think the water would be the warmest is actually in the 50s in some of these areas. While the bath water continues to the north into parts of the Pacific, into the Gulf and the Caribbean, the reason you see cold water here is because lower pressures in the western Pacific are driving your global winds this way, and right near the coast, you get what you call upwelling. As you move that surface water away with the wind, you pull that cold or deeper water up to the surface. And we are seeing a bit of a La Nina develop with that cold water across the eastern Pacific. 
The forecast is for that to go back down and become more of a neutral phase as we head toward the winter. And that's why I'm looking at the data from what's happened in the past from 1981 to 2010 during those ENSO neutral phases. Also new and developing this week is what's happening in the Arctic. We've got a really disruptive polar vortex up here. We're dropping a piece of that down into North America. That's going to bring some cold air as we head through this week across the Great Lakes. Maybe our first snowflakes too across parts of the arrowhead of Minnesota and southern Canada. Can you imagine if this was December or January or February? We'd be looking at sub-zero temperatures across a good part of the United States. Is this a sign of winter to come? Maybe so. With an ENSO neutral phase, I mean, that's what's going to happen. Another thing we're seeing across the Arctic is the sea ice extent. Right now, it's pretty much right in the average area for the last 10 years or so. But if anything, maybe there's a little more this year. You can see that here on the sea ice extent area. We're continuing to see that sea ice melt as we enter September. That's normal for this time of year, and there'll be more melting over the coming weeks until we finally reverse that. That usually happens about the first or second week of September, and then we start to build that ice pack up. Here's how much ice we had across the Arctic last year. Here's where we are on this day this year. One thing to note, there's more snow this year across the north slope of Alaska, just to the west of Greenland, and even across Greenland, there's been quite a bit of snow over the last month or so. So we're already developing cold air around the Arctic. And with a little more ice just to the north of Alaska, also to the north of Siberia, if there's not ice, we've not seen much melting lately, so the water is still pretty cold. As we develop the snow across Siberia, which is expected, this is the newest European ensemble data taking you out into October 15th. Still looking healthy for that snow to develop here. Also across Alaska into the Northwest Territories, more snow expected. And of course, if it's cold enough to snow across the Arctic Sea, you're going to get some ice starting to build up. And remember what I said earlier, if we get that warm Pacific water impacting the global weather pattern, at least in this part of the country, that would mean a ridge starts to build across the west. It doesn't mean it's going to stay there forever, but with these types of setup, as the cold builds across Siberia, we're going to start to freeze up the Arctic. And now with this flow, you're going to bring that cold air right down into North America. That would open up one heck of a winter, I think. These are the things I'm thinking about this week. Just a few thoughts about winter and what I think it's going to look like. Last year was wild. We had snow along the Gulf Coast. I'm not saying we're going to see that again. That was pretty anomalous. But this year, I think is going to be different. Maybe more snow in areas that didn't see snow. For example, parts of the east, I think you get a little more snow especially if we can get some big storms going along the coast. I'm not going to go through every part of the country. You saw the map, but I still think parts of the upper Midwest, the Northern Plains, the Great Lakes, to me, that area looks colder than normal. And if it's going to be warm anywhere, I think it's across the Southwest, just as we see some impacts of that ridging. Also, possibly the far Southeast as your trough develops more like this. More to come on this. Another update is on the way next week, so make sure you subscribe. I do a daily weather forecast, or at least almost every day. If you want to check that out, it's right here. I'll see you over there.